Today we're talking about how to run a Jupyter Notebook on a Windows computer. And uh, to do that, we will use Docker, which allows us to run a virtual machine. And in this case, we'll actually run a Ubuntu operating system that runs a web server, which hosts the Jupyter Notebook. And we'll be able to access that notebook by going to a browser and then opening up the IP of the local host. So the local host just means the IP that's locally on this machine to access a website that will serve the Jupyter Notebook. So an easy start uh, to do is we have to download Docker for Windows. If we open up a website, so we can just search for Docker download you know however you want to search for it and what we find is install docker for windows sounds good let's go for that one thing to mention here this is important it depends on the version of windows that you have running there is the community edition ce which is only available for windows 10 professional and enterprise it uh, requires something called Hyper-V or Hyper-5. I'm not sure exactly. I think it's Hyper-V. Um, that's only supported in those professional versions. If you have a home edition of Windows 10 or an older version like Windows 7, then you will need something called the Docker Toolbox. And that one you can also download at the same website. So you can kind of see it's right here. It's a little bit hidden. The initial instinct is to just go for this one. This will only work for Windows 10 Professional. So we'll go with the Docker Toolbox. Uh, after the installation, everything will kind of run very similarly. So this should work for the tutorial purposes. So uh, what you have to do is you have to you know, scroll down. And now you can select Get Docker Toolbox for Windows. Of course, if you have a Mac, you can just download it for Mac. So we save this here. I think this whole thing is about 200 megabytes in size, so it's not too large. So I have already installed this uh, program and uh, you basically just keep the original settings. You just click OK and it should work just fine. So what we get then is an icon on the desktop that's called Docker Quick Start terminal so you want to open that up so now if we launch this we you know get a bunch of uh, configuration coming in and it's waiting for an IP so this will take some time to finish and uh, while this is running uh, I'll just give a really really quick overview of what uh, docker actually is so docker has a really neat uh, logo it's this whale that functions as a container ship so if i actually do docker and you know we'll see the icon here so this is kind of uh, what you will see a lot so this is an interesting plot that kind of explains the difference between what a docker container is versus a virtual machine so Basically, what it does is you have a host operating system. In this case, it's Windows. And with traditional virtual machines, you would have a hypervisor, which is a layer between the host operating system and then some virtualized operating system that sits on top and operates through the hypervisor on the host operating system. Um, the problem is, is if you have multiple Docker, con uh, if you have multiple virtual machines, they will all have to run their own instance of the operating system, the guest operating system, and then they all have their own libraries and dependencies, and then they run all their different programs. In this case, App A and App B, and so on. If you run it in Docker, it's practically a very similar experience. So you can run a different operating system on top of another operating system but it is much more efficient because it can actually resolve dependencies across different containers 
So in this case, uh, we have uh, only one, uh, obviously, host operating uh, system. Then we have this Docker engine on which we launch our Docker containers. And this Docker engine can resolve that the libraries between these uh, instances are actually shared. So it can manage the resources in a much more efficient way. Okay, so like very brief introduction. So in the meantime, this launched. So what we can see here is we have a nice whale. Um, since it's Docker, it's great. So now we can also see we have an IP. And uh, so this is something that we want to keep in mind. This is the local IP that we can access later to see our web server running in our own browser. So this is something we want to recognize. So now uh, this is kind of like a command line, like a bash type uh, program. So here we can run Docker commands. So if I type Docker, it will list me all the commands that are available from the Docker tool. And uh, so we only briefly gonna touch on Docker run and uh, Docker execute, uh, but there's a lot more functions here. So uh, one useful thing is if we do Docker PS, it will show us all the running instances of uh, Docker containers. So right now there is no you know, Docker jobs running. So this is empty. So now we want to launch a Docker container and specifically uh, we want to run a Jupyter notebook. So if we Google for Docker, Jupyter, I think it's with a Y. Okay, there we go. And I know there is a minimal image because it can get very large. So we found something here. And uh, what we found here is the Docker Hub website. And the Docker Hub is a repository where people upload Docker images that are freely available for everybody to download and run. Here is a brief overview of what this does. Most of the information is probably on GitHub, but this is the image that we want to use. Wrong button. So this is the image that we want to use. It's called Jupyter. Lovely. Okay. It's the Jupyter Minimal Notebook. Okay. So in order to run an instance, we have the docker run command. So now usually we can just give it the image name that we wanted to run and uh, it will do so. So to make life easier, we can name it. So we call it Jupyter for no Jupyter Notebook and uh, we could do some port mapping so this can be important depending if the ports on your machine are already used and uh, the docker image so this docker program internally will expose its services under a certain port but you don't have that port available on your local machine you can reroute these ports so i know that this uh, jupyter image will show the service on port 8888 and we could change that port uh, to whatever we want it to be so how this works is the first so under the parameter p i could say i want the thing to run at 8887 um, instead of 8888 and then uh, we have the minimal notebook so this command if i run this it will create a new instance that is named jupyter it will bind the port 8888 from that container onto our local port 8887 and it will be available under the ip that we saw above so if i execute this it will now have to download that image so since i tested this before 
it will already have downloaded that image. So, you know, for me, this is faster. If you run it for the first time, it will actually download this image from Docker Hub and then install it on this machine and then run it. So as a return, what we can see is it gave us this token. And this is something specific to this Docker container. And uh, this is kind of like a password to get access to the machine. So now we can uh, go here. Let's open a new tab. Okay, so this was uh, what the machine gave us. So now we have to find the IP uh, from the beginning, which was this one. All right, so here we have it, right? So we have our IP, we have the port, and then the token password. So if we go to this site, we should be able to see, sorry, that's right. So this is important. So I already fell for this. So what you can see is this, uh, this server tells us that, where is it? Uh, there we go. So this tells us, this Docker container told us that it's exposing the web service at 8888. But when we launched the container, we mapped 8888 to 8887. Okay, so instead of using what it said, if we change this to 8887, it should work. And it works, it's a miracle. Okay, so this is great. So now we actually have a Jupyter notebook server running on our local machine. So we can here just create a new notebook. So this uh, Docker image supports Python 3, but there's other Docker containers that would support other versions like R or Python 2 or even all three at once. So now we created a new uh, notebook, right? And uh, I can call it whatever I want. It's my Jupyter notebook. And uh, as you can see, it's completely functional. I can do math in it if I want to. It works, the answer is correct. And uh, yeah, so that's a really simple way to get this running. Um, another thing that I want to show, let's see if we can get this to work, is let's say we want to use the command line. So here now, because we started Docker, I can also use the command line. So I can type Docker here. I have the same commands, right? So you see all these commands again. So Docker also works in the command line. It would also work in the PowerShell, uh, whatever you like. So with this command, I can actually log into the like an existing machine, the Docker exec. So let's first have a look what we have here. So now we can see that I actually have the Jupyter Minimal Notebook running and it's running under the name Jupyter that we gave it. And so we can actually log into the server right now. So if I do this, I can call it uh, by name if I want to. So here I can just call it by Jupyter and uh, we want to use bash, let's say to get in. So now we're actually on the Jupyter notebook and this is actually a Unix operating system. So here we can use all the commands that were used for like in, in Unix. So if I list this directory, I actually see the Jupyter Notebook that we just created. So the Jupyter Notebook, IPython Notebook. And then we have a work directory and so on. So I hope this was uh, helpful. I mean, it's a very brief introduction. It's obviously not a full tutorial on Docker, but uh, I hope this helps. I would really recommend for you to play around with Docker. It's a very powerful visualization tool. Um, especially in the advent of cloud computing, it's extremely useful because you can completely um, encapsulate uh, pipelines into these containers 
and then run them completely independent of any software um, because you can pack all the dependencies into this image and you can virtually run these things anywhere, like in the cloud, on your computer, on your friend's computer, and the results will always be the same. So give it a try. And uh, I hope this was like, you know, just like an interesting brief introduction. So I'll put some links um, below so you can have a look and uh, try it yourself. Um, so yeah, good luck.